Welcome back, beautiful tri-state area. You're listening to A Moment of Zen right here on 710 WOR, the voice of New York iHeartRadio. I'm your host, Zen Sams. Coming up in our Trailblazers segment brought to you by Metropolitan Lifestyles, today we're chatting with Danielle Fetti, founder of FetTech. FetTech is an innovative biotech company in the regenerative medicine space. It's a one-of-a-kind medical device company working to overcome the limitations in medical technology, as well as, of course, unprecedented breakthroughs in regenerative medicine. FetTech's groundbreaking multi-tissue platform gives the body the power to heal in a natural, safe way. The product not only helps skin to heal quickly post-treatment, but also promotes healthier, brighter, and firmer skin. I can't wait to hear all about this product line. She's gonna join me to chat about skin rejuvenation, breakthrough technology for burn victims, and how regenerative medicine is at the heart of it all. Now, regenerative medicine is focused on developing and applying new treatments to heal tissues and organs and restore function lost due to aging, disease, damage, or defects. The human body has a natural ability to heal itself in so many ways. But don't take my word for it. Take our expert on the microphone's word for it. Welcoming now to the show is my expert at hand, Danielle Fetti. Welcome to the show, superstar. Thanks for having me. I'm so excited to chat with you. So from nurse by trade, working in wound care and trauma, you and Hubby Clay, a tissue engineer who invents medical devices, had visions on how to advance the regenerative medicine space. And to my understanding, you just wanted to help patients in need. So you founded FetTech. Can you tell us more about the journey that led you to found to founding this company and how did your backgrounds in nursing and tissue engineering converge to form this incredibly innovative company? Well, from the time I can remember as a young girl, I always wanted to help people heal. So I can remember being on the playground and someone would fall, bust their lip open, blood everywhere, all the other kids run away and I was the first on the scene holding that child and wanting to help. But I had to take a really a traditional route to get here because I struggle in school. I'm dyslexic. So reading and writing was challenging. However, I played lacrosse, which helped me get into college. And in college, I took up nursing. When I was doing my rounds in the hospital, I realized like this wasn't for me. I didn't feel fulfilled. I didn't know why, but I saw I I felt myself doing something bigger to impact more people. So I jumped over to the medical device and pharmaceutical world. And I had amazing um, corporate training. I was able to fly the world, work with different hospitals with really innovative products, teaching surgeons in the OR how to use these cutting edge technologies. But I job hopped early on, company after company trying to find my way and feel fulfilled. I came upon regenerative medicine and that was it. Fell in love. One night I met my husband, who wasn't my husband then, who attended a (laughs) dinner. And so we were trying to mutually help a patient with a rare bacteria, flesh-eating disease. And through our mutual passion of wanting to help this patient, we discovered that together we could move mountains in the hospital. We were able to take a product that he helped develop for this company and share it with patients and areas within healthcare that the company at the time just was too narrow-minded to see that we could help. And we would brainstorm like how to advance the remediative regenerative medicine space, how to make it better. Well, one day we got fired from this company. And at the time I was devastated, but it was the biggest blessing ever. Because looking back, when you have a company that answers to a board, they're money driven and everything's about the bottom line, the money. And we know that we're all going to be patients one day. And I would want to treat someone in the hospital the way I would want myself to be treated or a loved one. So I told him, you know, you're an engineer. You have helped develop every big regenerative medicine product used in the hospitals to date. We have experience on bo- on all ends of medical device between the two of us. Let's create something better and let's do it ourselves. Let's not take outside funding. Let's spend our own money so we don't answer to anyone. And by that route, if we get FDA approval, we'll be able to bring out a better product to the patients that need it way faster than any other company could. Fast forward to today. Mm-hmm. And according, and you're onto something because according to the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics, the healthcare and biotech industries are projected to grow significantly. And I mean, significantly in the coming, in the coming years. And this indicates a ripe market for innovation solutions. Uh, and, and of course, for companies like yourself, FetTech. Now the regenerative medicine market size 
was valued at close to $29 billion. That's back in 2022. But it's projected to grow from $35 billion, that was in 2023, to $198 billion by 2030. Now, FedTech is described as the pioneering company in the regenerative medicine space. Could you elaborate on how your multi-tissue platform works and its potential impact on patient care? Yeah. So when I started using regenerative medicine and was introduced to these type of products used in the hospital, it was around 2007. And from 2007 to 2018, when we were FDA cleared, all devices were derived from one tissue source. And when you only use one tissue, you're, li you're limited to the biomolecules in that one tissue source. So we thought, how can we give the body more of the good stuff it could potentially use to heal? Because the truth is in healing, we don't know exactly what the body needs or when it needs it. We can throw around different conversations about various collagen types, hyaluronic acid, growth factors, exosomes. But at the end of the day, it's an abundance of all of these things, leaving it up to your own body to decide what it needs and when it needs it. So we took more than one tissue tissue, develop the multi-tissue platform, and we now have a product that can give your body like the most robust amount of ingredients, if you will, to remodel and repair. I mean, it's interesting because if you look at the preclinical treatments of burn wound models, inclusion of stem cells resulted in better wound healing by inducing improved granulation tissue formation, collagen deposition, healing speed, wound appearance, amount of scarring, presence of adnexal structures, and even regulation of inflammatory markers. In this case, stem cells are at the heart of the treatment. Regarding your technology, how does your multi-tissue platform work to promote skin regeneration and healing, and what sets it apart from existing products and technologies on the market? The easiest way to describe it is, let's say your house burned down to the ground, right? And I gave you a hammer, some nails, and wood, and a builder. That builder could build something. They could build some structure. Would it be a remodel of your home? No. But if I gave them an abundance of tools and I gave them plumbing and electrical and structure and instructions on how to use all of that and what I wanted, your house could get remodeled. So I equate that to our product versus some of the other products out there. There's a lot of great products that have great biomolecules that will aid in regeneration. But the more of the good stuff you give your body, the more your body is able to pick and choose what it needs to remodel. And I've seen miracles. I mean, I've worked with these type of products for a really long time. And it wasn't until our product was cleared in the hospital. And I would say, listen, I know it's scary to try a new product, um, but let's find a patient that's in your hospital right now that you're praying at night. You have something comes across your desk to help this patient because you don't know what else to do. And they have an open abdomen with a huge infection. And everyone in the regenerative medicine space knows that if you have an infection present, you cannot or you should not heal until you treat the infection, where we will able to simultaneously heal the infection, um, or sorry, heal the wound and treat the infection at the same time. And patient after patient, I would just see miracles. And I didn't think as a wound care nurse that we could heal patients with poor blood flow to an area. I thought we would have to amputate their leg. We would try our product and it would work and we would save a limb. And so I'm very proud of the product we have. And it is definitely advanced because we're sealing we're, we're seeing healing that I never thought we would see very quickly. Well, you set out to do exactly that when you were a child and look how full circle you've come. And when you look at non-invasive products, uh, it, they're on the rise. According to American Society of Plastic Surgeons, the demand for minimally invasive cosmetic procedures continues to rise today, indicating a need for innovative products. Now, obtaining FDA clearance on a gel for the aesthetic space that acts as a magnet to bring stem cells to the injured, quote unquote, area, signaling to the body to harness its own regenerative capabilities sounds rather complicated. Could you speak to the challenges you've faced in obtaining FDA clearance for your products, particularly in such a cutting edge field like regenerative medicine? Yeah, it, it's tough. So we are cleared as a medical device. And our first, our first and only right now FDA approval was for a wound powder. And we have like a book, probably a foot long of all the clinical studies we had to do. And remember, we funded this ourselves. And there was one study in particular where we kept um, failing. We weren't able to complete it because it was a viral study. So we had to prove that if the tissue had virus on it, would we infect a human that we were implant or using our product on? We don't implant, but use it topically on a patient. And 
we were failing this test. And through that discovery, at the time I was devastated, I was crying. We didn't have thousands more to shove and, and redoing this test. We discovered that we inactivate envelope viruses. At the time, I didn't know what an envelope virus was. Um, so we Googled it and I saw herpes and I'm like, oh, well, that's great. In the future, I do get fever blisters usually once a year on my lips. I will be using this. Um, but we just kind of checked it away. This was a year before COVID broke out. So now wow. COVID breaks out and my husband Googles envelope viruses and says, <laughs> you know what an envelope virus is? I'm like, yes, you told me it's a herpy. He's like, no, coronavirus and some of the world's most deadliest diseases like Ebola, Zika, HIV, hepatitis, and the list goes on and on. And I'm like, what? So our mission from the powder was to, over COVID, during COVID, we made our powder into a gel. Because from gel form, we thought that we could administer it in different ways to help people that had COVID, like inhalation, potentially IV. So wound powder was first. We developed a gel. And somewhere along the way, I love all things beauty. And I sat back and I'm like, I am seeing the most beautiful, stunning results remodeling tissue in burn patients. In trauma, we would have volumetric tissue loss where a chunk of the patient's body was on the side of the road. And normally the old school products we would use would, wouldn't, you would still have a concave area. Right. The skin would grow across to heal, but you still had it like a chunk of skin taken out where yeah. we would use our product and it would fill in from the base up and then epithelize over. And fascinating. Like, yeah. Right? So I was like, gosh, if I, I love all things beauty, I would love to use this on my face, like post laser, for example. Imagine right? that. Mm -hmm. so, so here so we I'm, are. So here we are. And I'm going to, cause I want to be mindful of the time. So you've come full circle. Now you're, you're trying to now replicate what you've done internally to, you know, beautify women, which I can't wait to try this, but we all know that FDA approval processes can be so lengthy and rigorous with only a fraction of submitted medical devices ultimately receiving clearance. So understanding these challenges the way you and your husband do is so crucial, especially not only for investors and stakeholders, but even just to get through the roadmap that you're supposed to, to get your, your, your product to market. Now, when you look at the stats, let's go back. Hospitalizations related to burn injury hover at 40,000 patients, including 30,000 at hospital burn centers. Over 60% of the estimated U.S. acute hospitalizations related to burn injury were admitted to 128 burn centers. Such centers now average over 200 annual admissions for burn injury and skin disorders requiring similar treatment. The statistics and the numbers don't lie. Looking ahead, what future developments or expansions do you envision for FETTECH, especially in the context of the aesthetic and cosmetic space? Well, we're already used in hospitals throughout the country in burn trauma, trauma wound care. But where we're focusing right now is working with the government to try to bring antiviral to fruition to help patients. And we are in the process of um, getting FDA approval for the gel, which, like I said, I cannot wait to use that post laser and I think the sky's the limit for the technology and, and where we can use this. Yeah, market research suggests such a growing trend towards personalized skincare and aesthetic treatments, presenting this incredible opportunity for companies like yours to really innovate and capture the market share. And I truly believe when you have a, a company like yours that's sustainable, that's proprietary, that the FDA is giving their blessing to, you know, you have a gold mine on your hands, my darling. And that is why you are in the trailblazer segment. Well, I appreciate that. I mean, the cool thing is, is I was never, you know, I'd be lying if I said I don't like money, like who doesn't, but that was never like the driving force behind this. I just knew if we did the right thing and help people to the best of our ability, the money would be there. And then we could reinvest that money into other projects to advance, you know, the regenerative medicine space. You are amazing. We are out of time. Thank you so much for coming on and chatting and really being so transparent and such a super mama because I know that you juggle so much, but it was a pleasure chatting with you today. Thank you. That was the incredible Danielle Fetti. You have to check her out directly on the website at fettech.com.
And at FedTech, they're all about tissue engineer developed science. They have a lot of backing. They built upon decades of forward thinking experience in specifically the regenerative medicine area. And of course, their tissue derived biomaterials, extracellular matrix and tissue engineering are at the forefront of it all. They pioneered a revolutionary technology platform, the multi-tissue platform, what we just talked about. And now this is going to be advancing healing tech and set to change the healthcare landscape forever. So excited about this product. It's safe, accessible accessible, and definitely life-changing, like she said. Head to fettech.com, F-E-T-T-E-C-H.com, and you can check her out on the gram at danielle.fetty. You're listening to A Moment of Zen right here on 710 WOR, the voice of New York. That was our trailblazer segment, founder of Fettech, brought to you by Metropolitan Lifestyles. We'll be right back after this.